today. How many of you ready for the word? We've been talking about whispers in the pews. Everybody say whispers in the pews. I know you may miss breakfast this morning, but act like you had your Wheaties this morning. Everybody say whispers in the pews. Now, you know I don't like quiet church. I'm sorry. I'm spoiled. Uh, I, I just been around too many rambunctious people. I, I don't like quiet church. It's all good. Sometimes everybody have different gifts, but that's just not my gift to have quiet church. Y'all say whispers in the pews. Come on, talk back to me. I, I almost heard Jerron. Y'all say whispers in the pews. There we go. And so we've been coming from this sermon series, which we've been dealing with mental health and some of the challenges we've seen with mental illness, as Melissa said, on the rise here in our world. And we must address it in the church because just as divorce has not only uh, equated in some statistical numbers in the world, but we're seeing it rise also in the church. It's just important for us to be able to deal with these things and address these things and talk about these things. Because I've noticed Kamari, that in the church there are just too many hypocritical, too many judgmental, too many selfish, uh oh, too many conceited natured individuals. But I learned this, Kamari, I can't blame the church because hurting people hurt. But thank God we have some hurt people in the church that's in the position to get delivered. Well, I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me. I, I wish I had somebody that knew what it's like to be bound and what it's like to struggle with the thing and uh, understand that God has the power to set you free. Can I preach to somebody this morning that's been delivered and lift you up and help you to have a hope that God can set you free, that God can deliver you. Somebody ought to lift their hand and say, Lord, I thank you for my deliverance right now. I already decree it. I already claim it in the name of Jesus. You ought to take a hold of it by faith. Say, Lord, I receive my deliverance. Can I preach to one person right now? Maybe you're out there online. You ought to lift up your hands right where you are and say, Lord, I receive. I, I wish I had about two people that had just a little bit of faith. But the Bible says if you have the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, God says you can speak to this mountain and tell it to be removed. I wish I had some believers in God's house today. Oh yeah, I come to speak a word to drive out every force of darkness and every demon from the pits of hell that's been assigned to get your life. Today is the day of freedom. Today is your day of deliverance. And I wish I had just one person that say, Lord, I thank you for my deliverance. I thank you for a timely word that you can speak over my life because he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Somebody ought to just declare that over your feet. I'm free in Jesus' name. I'm free in Jesus' name. Yeah, whispers in the pews. Mental illness is like many other diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes. It can be inherited or it can be developed. I'll say that again. It can be inherited, passed down from generation to generation or it can be developed. Jordan, go to sermon slides point two or three and there is something that's written by Aaron Smith he wrote a piece in the book called whispers in the pews and he says this Aaron Smith says this and I quote almost all mental illnesses include feelings of deep worthlessness that pierce our minds undivided and get deep into our what deep into our what he was all Bible, and I wonder if he recognized that first, that thing started in our mind, and then it got into our heart. We believe, we begin to believe these, watch this word, cognitive distortions about ourselves. But this is what I've come to understand, that there is something that the church has to do. There's something that the church must begin to do when dealing with those that have been battling these issues. It's no different than how you would deal with someone that's struggling with high blood pressure. There's no different than how you would deal with someone that has an anger issue. Y'all all right? It's no different. You should treat people 
in the same manner of which Jesus treated them. And, and I'm going to go to that later. But Maya Angelo said this, and y'all see I'm doing some review for the folks that weren't here. Uh, I'm doing some review. Maya Angelo said this, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them what? Feel. Never forget that for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, I told them this. Well, I said this, but how did you make them feel? We can say a lot. We can talk a lot. We can even do a lot. How many of you have ever gotten frustrated by something you did for people and felt like they didn't appreciate it? Can I talk to somebody today? But I, I want to know, was there an emotion that was connected to what you did? Were they able to experience the emotion that you had when you gave it to them? Uh-oh. Let me keep on moving. And so the first thing I come to understand as a church, it's important for us to make people feel welcome and love. I don't care what they've gone through. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care how they act. It's important that you cause people to feel welcomed and loved. Everybody say it, class. Welcomed, welcomed, and loved. Somebody say love. But Hebrews 13 and 3, that's why I take my first passage of Scripture, and it'll be on the screen. If you're taking notes, please take copious notes. Hebrews 13 and 3, it says this. Let's go to work, Colin. Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. How many of you think about somebody that's in prison? Maybe or maybe not it's one of your loved ones. Yeah, but can I speak this word into your spirit that everybody's not in natural prison. Everybody is not in a physical prison. There are people every day that you talk to that are living in a spiritual prison. Yeah, there, there are people that you talk to every day that's in an emotional prison. Can I, can I preach to you right now that, that God, he wants you to understand that he spoke through this author and he said, remember those that are in prison as if you were there yourself. And this is what I came to understand, Heather. Sometimes we can't remember folks because we don't know what it feels like to be there. Yeah, sometimes we get so caught up in what we're doing. We get so caught up in our own situations and we have a lack. Watch this big letter E word of empathy. Everybody say empathy, class. Yeah, we, we lack what's needed in our lives and that's called empathy everybody say empathy e-m-p-a-t-h-y so i'm gonna read a quote by carl rogers carl rogers he wrote this true empathy is always everybody say always it's always free of any evaluative or diagnostic quality True empathy is always free of any evaluator or diagnostic quality. This comes across to the recipient with some surprise. If I am not being judged, perhaps I'm not so evil or abnormal as I have thought. When you show empathy, people should feel good about how you receive their message. Yeah, if, if somebody receives the notice that there's a sickness, there's an illness and you don't show empathy you're going to cause them to feel bad about it it's all about not what you said not necessarily what you did but how you made them what? feel y'all with me so far? come on class but listen what I like about Jesus is that Jesus he showed empathy. Somebody say, Jesus showed empathy. He showed empathy to the woman that was caught in adultery. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The woman caught in adultery. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. 
and it reads from verse 1 it says Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives verse 2 but early the next morning he was back again at the temple a crowd soon gathered and he sat down and he taught them verse 3 as he was speaking teachers of religious law and the Pharisees they brought a woman who had been caught in the act somebody say in the act it, it wasn't something they suspected they caught her in the what the act of adultery and they put her in front of the crowd verse 4 teacher they said to Jesus this woman was caught in the act of adultery I wonder how many people don't caught you uh oh verse 5 the law of Moses says to stone her The law says to what? Stone her. Listen, y'all, can I have a transparent moment? Yeah. Sandra, can I have a transparent moment? I would have been dead a long time ago. All the stuff I done got caught doing. Uh Uh-oh. Listen, the law of Moses says to stone her. How many of y'all have been dead a long time ago? Once you tell the truth and say the devil, yeah. If I was caught, not the stuff I did in secret. What do you say? Verse 6 says this. Watch this, y'all. They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. Right? They wanted Jesus to say, oh, it's, it was, it's okay. Right? Having empathy doesn't mean you say, oh, it's okay. Nah, y'all, some of y'all missing it. Having empathy doesn't mean you're compromising your belief. Happen, having empathy just means I'm here for you. Yeah, having empathy just means I can relate to what you're going through. Having empathy means I, I can feel maybe somewhat what you're dealing with. Y'all all right? But Jesus, they was trying to trap him because they really wanted to get Jesus. Yeah, but they used this situation, they tried to chap him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger, verse seven. They said, hey, we need an answer. So Jesus stood up and he said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Verse eight, then he stooped down again and wrote in the, in the dust, verse nine, When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one. Jesus showed empathy, y'all. And what trips me out about this, Naila, what what trips me out about this particular passage of Scripture, Jesus could have been the one who threw the stone. Johnny, listen. Y'all, y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. Jesus told the Pharisees, he says, you that are without sin, throw the stone. I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me. Tanya, I want you to get this. But Jesus, who was without sin, could have been the first one to throw the stone. What does that signify? That signifies, watch this, that he didn't think he was better than he was. Yeah. Because what happens oftentimes in the church is because we never did that thing and we don't understand. Hello, somebody. Because I didn't get pregnant out of wedlock. Now I think I could talk about somebody else. Uh Uh-oh. But because I didn't act a fool and cut somebody out in front of the whole church. (laughs) Can I get a witness? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Then then I'm the one that feels like, oh, I'm better. No, baby. Let me tell you, for the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And there's been so many people that God says, how you dare not show empathy? when I've shown you grace time and time again. Is there anybody here that know that God has been gracious and merciful to you? Is there anybody here that know that there's some penalties that you should have paid? 
and it was the grace and mercy that covered you. Hello, somebody. Even Gerard came here this morning saying, I should have got a speeding ticket. But I thank the Lord that I had a good driving record. No, my son, the Lord God gave you favor and he was on your side. Let, let me tell you there's some stuff where you broke the law and you should have been in jail, but God has covered you. I wish I had somebody in the house to understand that, yeah, you may have messed up and this is what, break it down, man. Something else I recognize. God often covers us and don't reveal it to others until we get to the point where we feel like we're going to continue to get away with it. That was good and y'all didn't even get it. Yeah, God will cover his people until you get it in your mind that I'm going to continue to keep getting away with this. Nobody's going to know. I'll keep it in secret. I'll keep it hidden. And then all of a sudden, God exposes it. And then, if you don't do something about it, it's just going to get worse. Has anybody been there before when you recognize if you didn't address and confront something in your life, God will let other people see it until you deal with it. You ought to tell your neighbor you got to deal with that thing. Some of y'all saying, Pastor Mike, what does all of this have to do with whispers and abuse? Because some folks just talk too much. Uh-oh. Let, let, me, let me go and let me close because I'm running out of time, but not out of word. Y'all, y'all all right? Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Go to sermon points three of three, Jordan. We read from the quote where Aaron Smith says, all mental illnesses include feelings of deep worthlessness that pierce our minds. And we be begin to believe these cognitive distortions about ourselves. And I've said it plenty of times that cognitive distortion in its simplest form is deception. The enemy, his main objective while here roaming this earth is to deceive God's people. The Bible says if it wasn't for the grace of God, even the elect would be deceived. That's what the Bible says. Read the Gospels. Even the elect would be deceived if it wasn't for God's grace and his mercy and his hand on, on their lives. I, I want you to get this. The enemy always wants you to believe a lie. And you say, Pastor Mike, is, is that really real? Listen, if you want to receive the crown of life, that means once you leave from this earthly place, and, and, and you're there with the Father that's in heaven. He says and he promised that you shall receive a crown. But if you're going to receive a crown and reign with him, the Bible says, Jesus says that you also must suffer with him. And the ironic thing, Kamari, Jesus, he was tempted, the Bible says, of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. How many of you know the word? He was tempted of, of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights when he had fasted. Watch this, y'all. And every time the enemy tried to tempt Jesus, he tempted him with a lie. Y'all all right? What does this have to do with mental illness? We're going to talk about it. Listen, every time, right, the enemy was trying to trick Jesus, he tried to trick him with a lie. And the thing was, it was so... It was so deceptive, he tried to even use the word of God, and he tried to twist even the word of God. How many of us think we know the Bible, but we're not careful? The enemy will try to use God's words against you. Oh, uh, man, I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me. That's why it's important that you stay in God's presence and that you know his voice. Somebody say, man, just nod and act like you, you understand. It's essential that you know his voice. Not just recognize it, but know his voice. It's essential, watch this, Lord, I have so much word. It's essential, watch this, Heather, that you're able to distinguish his voice and recognize, okay, this is not God, even if it sounds like it. 
this so good. I wish I had my lapel mic on so I can move my hands. Listen, I, I, I want you to get it, y'all. It can sound like God and be deception. I, I love God so much. This is what he does, though. Reuben, this is what he does. God is so good to us. Watch this, y'all. He always gives us the first word. Everybody say the first word. I, I've stated this in previous sermons. God will always show you the thing first. So when deception does come, even when it sounds like his voice, you already know because he gave you the first word. Did anybody get that? Uh, uh, do I need to repeat that? I need to repeat that for you, Melissa. You, you're looking in a daze over there. Listen, God is so good to us. And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Lord Jesus, I'm running out of time. I'll give you an example. So, when I graduated college back in 97, yeah, 1997, um, watch your mouth. Uh, watch your mouth. Don't get in trouble. I got a belt on today. I'll take it off. All right. Anyway, uh, in 97, I graduated. And, and so, back in 97, uh, Andrew... I was praying because I graduated from the University of Florida, one of the best colleges and universities in Florida. And uh, I graduated and I was praying, Andrew, and I said, Lord, show me where to go from here. There's nothing in Gainesville. I know I'm not staying here. And so, I'm sorry, Gainesville, but it's the truth. But anyway, I said, I'm not staying here, Jerron. And so I, I had to pray. I said, God, show me where to go. And so around that time, I ended up getting a job. James said, I got a job in Jacksonville. Y'all all right? Y'all listening to my story? It's, it's my birthday week. Y'all listening? Okay. So I got a job in, in Jacksonville. And so I said, okay, I'm in Jacksonville. I'm commuting from Gainesville to Jacksonville every day. But at least I have a job. Where y'all at? Yeah. I, I want to talk to that person that's just worried about a job. You better be worried about your purpose. Uh-oh. Uh, let me help you understand. So I'm like, I got a job. Maybe, maybe I should move to Jacksonville. And so listen, Colin, for literally for a month, I was being tormented trying to figure out whether to move to Jacksonville. And I'll never forget this day. I hope I don't in my life. You mean that I was in a church service? That's the good thing about coming to church. I was in the church service, not in my home. I was in the church service, y'all. And the fire of God fell so, so hot in the service. And all of a sudden, everything that was confusing became clear. But we know the Bible says, watch this. Prince Lane, the Bible says, for God is not the author of what? Conf How many of y'all know the word? But I was confused and I was being conflicted. And, and, and the power of God fell on me in that service. And all of a sudden, I could just hear God speak to me. And God says, what did I tell you the first time? And I had to recall that even before I graduated, God told me he was going to move me to Orlando. God will always place something in your spirit first. But then the enemy comes. Man, I felt this. Then the enemy came and tried to make it seem like God, but it wasn't him. So even when it seems like God, what did he say the first time? Yeah. And then... Yeah, what did he say the first time? And then I, I had to come to the conclusion that sometimes I miss God. Sometimes, watch this, not only did I miss his voice, watch this, I missed his timing. Well, I'm preaching better than y'all talking to me this day. I, I, I not only missed his voice, but I missed his timing. Some opportunities come one time. 
And if we're second guessing what God is saying, we're second guessing, hey, is this the voice of God? We're, we're, we're not operating in faith. We're not moving in faith. Sometimes that opportunity comes and goes. And then there's other opportunities that may come back up again out of his grace and out of his mercy. But you have to understand timing. Everybody say understand timing. Watch this, y'all. Man, I, I, I'm way off track from where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be talking about whispers in the pews, but somebody must need to hear this. Listen to me. But not only do we get timing messed up, watch this, y'all. It's important to understand God's timing. Because just, watch this, Jordan, just because God spoke it to you first doesn't mean now. Some of us have received a dream from God. Some of us have been impressed upon our spirit that God is, is doing something in our lives and, and we feel like God has called us to this. Some of us, God has called us to open a business, but is he saying right now? Or is he saying get ready? Oh, uh, man, I can't get one amen. Listen. From Genesis, the third chapter, the enemy is always tried to deceive. He told Eve, you won't surely die if you partake of this. You won't surely die, but let me go. Cognitive distortions. I got to get out of here. Y'all all right? Can y'all give me like three more minutes? Okay, I didn't hear nothing, so I got to do one and a half. All right. Cognitive distortions. Selective abstraction. Personalization. Magnification. Minimization. Arbitrary inference. And over generalization. Let, let's talk about, and I, and I, I got to close. That's why this is called a sermon series. Amen. Everybody say sermon series. All right. So that means you just got to stay tuned. All right. Arbitrary inference. Arbitrary inference. You don't get this in church all the time. Sometimes you have to go to a psychologist, a family counselor. They get these type of words, but they're going to tell you the same thing. A cognitive distortion, also known as arbitrary inference. Put it up on the screen, Jordan. It's drawing conclusions when there is little or no evidence. There's a lot of people in this world right now today because of social media delivering arbitrary <laughs> inference. Y'all ever heard of conspiracy theories? Uh-oh. Don't touch on that, Pastor Mike. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has something to say. And the Bible says in the last days, people are going to grow away from the faith just because they believe false prophets. So I want to know who you listening to. Yeah. I, I want to know, y'all. I want to ask this question. Who are you listening to? Who has your ear? Because right now, even in the church, there's too many that are blind leading the blind. It's too many people that's not hearing God leading other people down the wrong path. And you have to be careful and say, God, I don't want to get caught up in that. I, I want to make sure that I'm not drawing conclusions when there's little or no evidence. How are you going to have an opinion about something and not have no facts? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Show me the proof. Yeah. Show me the proof. Well, how, well, how you know God is real? I can tell you he's real. Just look at my life. Give me about a day to show you all my failures and how God delivered me out of them. How, how do you know God is real? Just give me five minutes and let me pray with you. Can I preach to somebody today? Yeah, I'm going to bring some facts and let you know and experience that the God you can't see is real. But there's some things that's in this world that's being taught, that's being spread, it's not real. And you starting to believe a lie. I want you to understand that God wants you to walk 
He wants you to walk in truth. You say, Pastor Mike, why are you yelling? I don't know. But God wants us to walk in truth. God doesn't want us to be deceived. Yeah. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that's that he also reap. You keep believing a lie, then you're going to start living a lie. Yeah. You keep believing that that married man yours, I don't know where that came from. You, you, <laughs> woo. All right. That just came out my mouth. I'm sorry. Listen. Yeah. You, you keep believing a lie, you're going to become a lie. Yeah. You, you keep on believing you can eat all them, them donuts and cupcakes and not get fat. You keep on believing that. Y'all all right? Listen. You got to believe the truth for the truth, shall. Yeah. Y'all pray for me. Come on, let's stand. Father, we say thank you for your word today. Help us to receive your truth. Come on, how many of you know how to pray and we're closing out? We pray against the forces of darkness that will try to teach us and show us and tell us a lie. But we refuse to believe a lie. We refuse to hear the enemy's report in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, can y'all pray with me for the next two, three minutes? Yeah. But we fight against every assignment of the enemy to try to blind us. We fight against every assignment of the enemy to try to deceive us. In the name of Jesus, for God, your desire is for us to walk in truth. Let us hear your voice. Let us distinguish your voice. God, for you said your sheep shall know your voice. Let us spend more time with you so we can know your voice clearer. In the name of Jesus. And in this time that we're living in, God, keep us covered. Keep us protected. There's so many things going on in the world. So many demons being released from underneath the earth. God, we pray for those that are in Haiti that have been impacted. Not only by the murder of the president, but also by the recent earthquake. We pray also, God, against it, against this disease and uh, these illnesses that have been airborne. We pray that you protect us. Don't let us be deceived. Let us see clearly. Everybody has an opinion, but let us know your word. Let us hold on to your word in the name of Jesus. God, we hold on to you. God, for we know your word says in the last days, people are going to turn from the faith. Let us not be named among them in the name of Jesus, but let us hold on to you in the name of Jesus. Help us, God. Lord God, to refuse to walk under selective abstraction. Help us not to walk under magnification. That we won't magnify little things and cause them to be larger than how we magnify you. Lord God, let us resist arbitrary inference in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray today. Oh yeah, we pray today for those that may be struggling with any type of mental illness. God, we know that some people may need counseling. Some people may need medication. But God, some people just need deliverance. Some people just need your Holy Ghost to fall upon them, to deliver their minds and their hearts. In the name of Jesus, all across this room, you ought to stretch your hands towards heaven. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray for your fire to fall, the fuego de Dios that fall. In the name of Jesus, move by your spirit and break every assignment of the enemy off the lives of your people that they may be free in Jesus name 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 we come against depression right now in the name of Jesus we come against suicide right now in the name of Jesus we come against schizophrenia right now in the name of Jesus we come against bipolarism right now the name of Jesus. Yeah. We think down barriers of isolation that would try to cause us to be bound. God, free your people. Help us to grow in community. In 
the name of Jesus. Now, if you receive that, you ought to lift up your hands and begin to thank him. All across this room, you ought to begin to lift up your hands. Even if you're watching online, you ought to lift up your hands and begin to say, Lord, I thank you for my deliverance. I thank you and I receive it. I decree it by faith in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, be with us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Come on. Give us some praise as you leave out. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed week.